All right, everyone, in this video, we are going to be looking at the ViewPress Tutorial 10 Homepage Styling Part 2 post. All right, so we'll be looking at a quick recap of the homepage styling that we did in the last tutorial. Then we'll be looking at some homepage styling updates. So we're going to look at how to fix the main card placement. So if you remember from the previous video, we have our main card right here, and then we have it being covered by the nav bar. So in this video, we will be fixing that. And then we're going to apply some hover effects to the main card. So when the user hovers over the main card, we're going to get a box shadow effect. And then we're going to get a hover effect on the logo. And then we're going to add a gradient background to the main card. So instead of this static background right here, we'll be applying a gradient background to the main card. All right. So let's start with the homepage styling recap. So in the previous tutorial, we began the process of styling the homepage. And by the end of the tutorial, we overrode the global styling variables for the accent color, the text color, and the border color in the palette.style file. So if you come over here, you can see I have the palette.style file opened up. And here is the accent color, the text color, and the border color. Now, the colors of these variables will then get applied instead of the colors originally set by the default theme. And these variables can also be used to style other elements of the blog as well. And we also added our own global styling variables to the palette.style file, which included the background color and this dark border color. And these variables were then used in the index.style file. So let me just open up the index.style file. So in the index.style file, we use some of the global styling variables along with overriding and adding our own global styling to the background color of the blog. So you can see right here, we used our background color from the palette.style file. And then we also added this styling to the main tag with a class of home. And then we added this styling right here to the header tag with a class of hero. We added all this styling and then we added styling to the div tag with a class of features. So we added all this styling to that. Now, after overriding and adding these styles to the blog, the main card on the home page is being covered by the nav bar, like we just saw. So in this tutorial, like I mentioned, we'll be fixing this issue as well as adding the hover effects to the main card logo into the box shadow around the main card. And then finally, we'll be adding a radial gradient background to the main card. All right. So Let's get into the homepage styling update. So you want to make sure that you start your local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. So you can see over here that I have the development server up and running. I have it running on port 8080. So this is our site. And then I have it running down here in this terminal. All right. Now, when adding the styling updates, be sure to add each block of code one at a time to your project, then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block of code is responsible for. Now you can view all of the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 10 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog repository. So you can come over to this repository right here to get the code for this tutorial. All right, so let's get into fixing the main card placement. So we're gonna start by, fi by fixing the issue of the main card being covered by the nav bar. So to fix this issue, we just need to update the padding in the home class. So if we come over here to our index.style file, what we want to do is we want to change the padding from zero to be eight rem, and we'll give a value of zero and another value of zero, and we'll save this file. Now what this does is this adds a padding of eight rem to the top and a padding of zero to the left, right, and bottom of the main card. And this will push the main card down so it's no longer being covered by the nav bar. So if you come over here to the site, and then if we inspect, you can see, if we come down here to our main card, you can see now that we have that padding of eight RAM being applied to the top and we have a padding of zero on the left, right and bottom. And let me just move myself out of the way. So you can see right down here that here is the padding that we just applied. All right, now you may be asking yourself, why don't we start with this padding? So in the previous tutorial, we used the padding zero to style the home class since that code was based off, a, off of a more complicated way of styling the footer component, which has now been simplified. And we'll be going over this simplified footer component styling in the next tutorial. So now that we fixed the placement of the main card, we're going to add the hover effects to the main card logo and to the box shadow around the main card. All right, so let's get into adding the hover effects. So to implement the hover effects, we'll be 
adding a CSS pseudo class of hover to the header tag with a class of hero, which we'll use along with the transition property to smoothly apply the hover effects to the main card logo and to the box shadow around the main card. All right, so let's start by adding this pseudo class of hover. So I'm just going to copy these styles right here. And then we'll come over here and I'll just paste them in. Let's save that. All right, so this hero colon hover right here, what this does is it applies the hover pseudo class to the hero selector, which will apply the styles defined inside of it when the user hovers their pointer over the header tag with a class of hero. So when the user hovers over that main card, it's going to apply this box shadow property to it. And then it's going to apply this transform property to the image tag inside of that header tag with a class of hero. And down here, we have this box shadow. So what this does is it changes the box shadow style defined in the hero class when the user's hovering over the header tag with the class of hero. So it's going to set this as the box shadow. So with these new values right here and with this new color, instead of this box shadow that's defined in the hero class up here. And then we have this transform property right here. So this applies the scale method to the transform property to increase the size of the image tag to be 1.1 times the original width and height. So when the user hovers over the header tag with the class of hero, we're gonna apply this transform to that image tag inside of the hero class. And that will increase the width and height of our logo on the main card. All right, so if you have any questions about the CSS discussed above, then you can check out these resources right here. So we have a resource for pseudo classes right here so you can read through that we have it for the hover pseudo class and then we have some resources for 2d transforms and css and then we have a resource for the box shadow property all right so now if we come over to the site you can see that when we hover over when we hover over the main card the logo is increasing in width and height and then you can see that box shadow property that's being applied so down here, we have our header tag with the class of hero. And then inside of there, we have that image tag. And that is where we are applying these hover effects to. All right, so the hover effects are working, but they aren't that smooth. So to make them smoother, we're going to use the transition property. So you can see here that when we just hover over it, it just quickly adds the hover effects. It doesn't smoothly render the hover effects for us. So to make that smoother, we're going to use the transition property. So the transition property allows you to change CSS property values smoothly over a specified duration. So to create a transition, you need to specify two values. So those values are the CSS property you want to add the transition to, and then the duration of the transition. So this is what our index.style file is going to look like after adding our transition property. So we Come over here, what we want to do is underneath this box shadow, we want to add the transition property and we will add it to the box shadow property. And then we're gonna set it for 0.2 seconds. And then we're gonna come down here and we're going to select the image tag and then we'll be adding our transition property and we're gonna use it on the transform property. And then we're gonna set that to be 0.2 seconds as well. So let's save this file. All right, so the transition property here with the box shadow with that 0.2 seconds, that adds the transition effect to the box shadow property with a specified duration of 0.2 seconds. And then we have the transition property right here being applied to the transform property. So this adds the transition effect to the transform property used by the image tag with a specified duration of 0.2 seconds. So that's right over here. So now when we hover our pointer over the main card, the hover effects should now look much smoother. So if we come back over here to the site, and then you can see now that when we hover over it, it takes 0.2 seconds for the hover effects to be applied, which makes it much smoother and much, much cleaner of an effect. All right, so 
that is what the transition property does for us. So if you want to learn more about the transition property, then you can check out CSS transitions right here. Now, all right, so now that we've added our hover effects, let's add the radial gradient background to the main card. All right, so CSS gradients allow you to display a smooth transition between two or more specified colors. And then you can also control numerous aspects of the transitions between the colors, including the direction, shape, number of colors, etc. And we'll be adding a circular radial gradient background to the center of the header tag with a class of hero. So if we come back over here, what we'll be doing is we'll be applying that circular radial gradient background to this main card right here, which is our header tag with a class of hero. All right, so let's add that in. So if we come over here, I'm just going to copy this code. We're going to add it right here. So and we'll save this file. So what this is doing is this is adding a background image right here. So that's the property that we use to apply the radial gradient background. So we have the background image and then we are using a radial gradient background. And then we are, so this adds the radial gradient background right here. And then with a circular shape, so we just define the shape right here to be a circle. So that defines the circular shape and we are going to apply it at the center of the main card in this case, in this case, which is that header tag with a class of hero. And then we're going to start it with this color right here. So this is where the color will start and then it's going to transition into this background color over here. And this background color was the background color that we set in the palette.style file. All right, so if we come over to our blog, now you can see that the background image for the main card is now different. So you can see that we have our radial gradient background being applied right here. And let me just zoom in a little bit here. So you can see now we have that radial background image instead of the background color, and it's a circular gradient background and it starts at the center of the main card of that color that we specified. So if you come over here, you can see we have this background image and it starts at this color right here and then it transitions into the background color. So the color on the outside of it is closer to the color of the background of the site. All right. Now, if you want to learn more about CSS gradients, then you can check out these resources. So we have resource for CSS gradients, complete guide to CSS gradients right here, and a guide for the radial gradient specifically, and then a practical guide on radial gradients in CSS, because we've basically just scratched the surface here with, with CSS gradients. So, um, you can check out that if you have any questions or you want to learn more about CSS gradients. And you can also check out Gradient Magic, which is a gallery of CSS gradients that you can freely use in your own projects. So you can come here to this site, and this is a really useful site, so you can just come here and you can just grab different gradients. Um, you can just copy the CSS directly, so it's a really cool site that you can check out. All right, so like we saw, the background of the main card should now be a radial gradient that starts at the center of the card with a color right here that we specified that circularly transitions to the background color. So you can see right here that that is now our background image of the main card. And we now have our hover effects being applied to the logo and to the box shadow. And we fixed that placement of the main card. All right. So quick recap of what we did. We looked over the homepage styling that we did in the previous tutorial, we applied our homepage styling updates, fixed the main card placement, added the hover effects, and then we added that gradient background. All right, so in the next tutorial, we'll be adding styling to make the footer component stick to the bottom of the page, and we'll add a highlight effect to the SVG icon. So if you come over here, you can see that our footer component isn't sticking to the bottom of the page, so we'll be 
adding styling that makes that stick to the bottom of the page. And then when you hover over it, we will have a hover effect for the SVG icon. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video. All right. So we'll see you there.